Good evening, River City friends and family. So good of you to take the time to, to join us tonight in this broadcast. We, we honestly love having you uh, as part of our extended online family. I just want to pray tonight that the word I bring is a word from God that will touch your life and bring encouragement to you. I want to start tonight by, by asking the question, does it sometimes feel uh, like you get the opposite? you get the opposite of what God has promised you. Well, I want to start by looking at Mark 4 and a familiar story in Mark 4, which many of you might have have read or, or heard before. But it starts in verse 35 and it says, On the same day, when evening has come, uh, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other boats, I always underline this part because it gets lost in the middle here, doesn't it? And other little boats were also with him. They weren't alone. There were others there. What happened here was stewarded by those in the boat with Jesus. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he, that's Jesus, was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no fight? 
<laughs> and they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Oh, this is such a good story. It's, it's, such a good, uh, 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 it's such a good reflection for us as believers because my first question I ask you is, does it sometimes feel like you don't get what God promised you? You, you get the opposite. You, you, Jesus says, let us go over to the other side and, 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 and a nice little cruise turns into a nightmare voyage. Many times in the Bible we see this kind of thing happening. Joseph gets a dream that he would be uh, living a fantastic life, but he ends up in prison. We find David gets a, gets a fantastic word from God that he would be king, uh, but he spends many years as a fugitive hiding in caves. God's promised people get, uh, God's own people get given a promise saying to them, I have a promised land for you, but to get to that promised land, they spend time in a wilderness. And here we have the disciples of Jesus in a place where Jesus said, come, let us go over to the other side. And, and they, they see the calm, but they end up in a storm. They did not cause the storm. They encountered the storm. They didn't make the storm. The storm happened. Uh, it's interesting here that they were not expecting a storm. Nothing about their demeanor said, this is what we expected to find in this time. Here's my, here's my title of my message tonight. Trust. Do you trust in God in the storm? Do you trust God in the midst of your storm? Do you trust God? It's easy to receive a word from God when the sun is shining and everything is beautiful. It's easy to receive a word from God when your life is rosy and everything is beautiful. It is much harder to hold on to that word that God's given you when it's stormy and it's dark and the night has come. There's nothing normal about this story. There's nothing normal about the series of events we see here. This is not a bunch of guys going on a nice little cruise. There were fishermen amongst this crowd. Uh, and for fishermen to become panicked and alarmed and stirred up means that this was not a normal storm. This was unexpected. This was worse than they could have imagined. I want to say to you today, the reality is that both favor and trials will lead you into storms. This does not mean that they were outside God's will. This happening to them did not mean that they were cursed. It did not mean that they were disobedient and this was their punishment. This storm happened. It's something they encountered. But I want to say though, there was something different about this storm. This storm was demonic in every way. It was sudden. It was fierce. It was dark. It was chaotic. It was out of control. It was demonic. The storm wanted to say to these people, this far and no further. You, you cannot go where God wants you to go. But I can encourage you today, every unnatural storm <laughs> meets its answer when it meets uh, a supernatural God. Our God is able to deliver us from every storm. But that doesn't change the fact. Sometimes following Jesus leads us into a storm. Sometimes following Jesus takes us places we never thought we would go. Uh, you know, when we get a word from God and the sun is shining and everything's good in our life, we sometimes think that going from calm to storm uh, means something has gone wrong with the vision of God. Something has gone wrong with the word of God. Maybe I've made a mistake. Maybe I've messed up. Maybe, maybe I've disobeyed God. But I want to encourage you today, never ever should you doubt what God gave you in the light when you find yourself in the darkness. You see, storms come because they want to divert you. Storms come because they want to distract you. Storms come because they want you to change where you're at. But I want to say to you today, and hear me clearly, that if you received a word from God, you've got to trust God, and you've got to stand in God. Does the Bible not tell us another story about a storm, where, where Jesus tells the parable that those who build on the rock, the storm may come, the wind and the waves, but those who build on the rock, their house will stand. My friends, today, if Jesus tells you to go to the other side, the destination is important, but the journey also. What if today 
What if today the storm is sent to bring out of you that which God needs in order to stand in new places. Where you are going right now, where you are going is new territory. These disciples had never been to to this land before. This was not a Jewish land. It was not full of Jewish people. This was an unfamiliar place. This was an uncomfortable place. This wasn't home to them. This isn't something they understood. And, And as we can read further in the story, this area was demonically controlled. The first thing they encountered on the other side was a demon possessed man so out of his mind that the whole village feared him. There was something fresh, something new that was going to happen on the other side. This is kingdom advance. This is taking territory. This is stepping into new levels of authority. This is expansion. This is advancements. This is how God grows us. If it was not for the storm, the storm became a preparation ground for what would be needed when they walked into the promise that Jesus gave them when he said, let us go to the other side. Don't forget something, my friends. They weren't just on a random little cruise. They were on a mission. They were on a destiny. They were called. Everything is on the line. The people on the other side was on the line. Their salvation was on the line. Their deliverance was on the line. The disciples were on the line. The New Testament church was on the line. If these guys failed, if these guys did not get what needed to happen on this voyage... Everything was on the line because Jesus wouldn't be with them forever. Jesus wouldn't be there all the time. And here's something you've got to understand. Sometimes the greatest revelation you can get is that it's not just about you. It's not just about your blessing. It's not just about your good days and and your wonderful times. Sometimes you have to realize when you make it, others make it. I just pointed out in the scripture when I read it to you. There were other boats following. There were other boats with them. Can you imagine if this is how terrified these disciples were on the boat where Jesus was? How terrified must the others have been on the other boats that did not have Jesus on them? You see, we get to steward something in the atmosphere, something of the kingdom of God in the atmosphere that doesn't just change our destiny, but changes the destiny for those who are with us. Remember the time when the disciples were fishing and they caught nothing? Jesus said, would you cast the net one more time? They cast the net and a catch so big came that they couldn't, they couldn't handle it by themselves. They had to call the other boats to come and share in the blessing that was coming. Is it possible today that your storm is a preparation, is a getting you ready for the things that God wants to do, not just in you, but through you for your family? That's why we have to take new territory. That's why we have to advance in the things of God because there are people depending on us. The question is, what do you do in the storm? What do you lean on in the storm? Do you trust God in the midst of your storm? What is your first response when a storm comes? Come on, let's just take it for a moment. When you see the dark clouds coming and you see the issues around you, what is your first response? Storms in life are inevitable. Nothing we can do about them. Often, storms sabotage, they sidetrack, and they cause many things to happen in our lives. It's possible sometimes that a storm just reveals where our faith is. A storm just reveals whether we actually are standing in God. What or who do you trust in? Is it possible that the storm is just revealing your confidence in God? Is it possible maybe that the storm coming is a revelation to you that there is some things in your life where you still don't trust God completely? Please know, I understand how bad it is when you feel helpless, when you feel powerless, vulnerable, when you feel exposed. It's a scary place. It's a scary place to feel overwhelmed. But here's my thought for you today. It's even worse when you're in a boat and you think Jesus is there and he just does not care. God is there, but he's doing nothing. I want to tell you, when you cry out, God, what are, well, I'm terrified. Can't you see how scared I am to see Jesus? Now, what is that all about? 
But I think the big question before I deal with that, and I'll touch on that now, is have you lost confidence in God? Do you trust God in the storm? If today you're in a storm and you've lost confidence in God, can I encourage you? Reach out to Him. Jesus has not left you. God has not left you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But there has to be something here. What is confidence in God? Well, we see here in the story that there's a picture of these people terrified. These people are fighting. They're crying. Uh, they, they're upset. And Jesus is sleeping. These guys are losing their mind. And Jesus is sleeping. You know what? Jesus had more confidence in God than I can imagine. Jesus knew that he wouldn't die. Jesus knew that he wouldn't, this wouldn't be the end of his journey. Jesus knew that God sent him on a mission. He knew that he was about his father's business. He knew where he was. See, I see something very humorous in this story, almost a cheeky confidence. It's like Jesus is saying to the devil, I'm, I'm having a nap. You can exhaust yourself. You can blow your wind all you like. You can throw everything at me. You're not going to stop me. You're not going to deter me. I'm going where God's called me to go. It's like when David says in, in Psalm 23, uh, he prepares a table in front of my enemies so I can eat and be at peace. Uh, it's like the palm tree who smiles at the hurricane and says, when you're all done with what you've done, I'll still be here standing tall. This is what I see here, a confidence in God that comes out of boldness, a boldness in the, in the knowledge of God's promise and the assurance of the, the goodness of God to perform that which He has spoken. God is faithful to complete what He has given you. There's a new level of authority and boldness. Now, I want to finish this message by just doing this last part and, and just showing you something uh, that, that, that you might have missed. You might have missed reading this story. It's a lost opportunity. You see, how does Jesus respond? Well, first of all, Jesus had a nap. And that, they woke him up and they said to him, Hey, Jesus, uh, don't you care that, that we're perishing? And Jesus looks up and we find he, he first of all takes on a demonic battle. He speaks to the storm. He rebukes the storm. The same language is used here that is used in, in chapter 125 of, the, of, of Mark where, where a demonic possessed man comes into the synagogue and Jesus says to him, Be quiet and come out of him. And immediately, that demonic spirit left this man. The same language is used here. So the first thing we see is Je Jesus deals with the storm for what it is, a demonic attack. And then we see he turns to the disciples. Now look at your scripture. Jesus rebukes the storm, but he speaks to his disciples. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Jesus is saying to them, you had this. Could it be possible, my friends, that Jesus was neither troubled nor afraid because he had faith in the disciples to stand in the authority they had? Could it be today that Jesus' silence wasn't his absence, but his absolute faith in the fact that these disciples had the authority and the capacity and the ability to speak to the storm in faith and set it still? Is it possible today that the silence of God in your situation isn't his absence, but his faith. That God believes you have been equipped, you have been given everything you need. You have the name of Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit, you have all authority in heaven to speak to the storm. God's silence isn't. God's silence isn't his absence. It's his faith. Would you speak and stand? You see, this is our problem often. We look at circumstances. And when the storm comes, the first thing we do is we think it's our job, the first thing to conclude that we have to call on God to come and intervene and fix the problem. But what if, by doing that, we're abdicating our New Testament kingdom, Pentecost authority to speak to the storm and see it quieted? Do you trust God in the storm? Do you trust the God in you in the storm? 
Because this is it, my friends. This is it. They didn't ask for the storm. <laughs> they certainly didn't enjoy the storm. They didn't even feel close to Jesus in the storm. Does that sound like you? Didn't ask for it. <laughs> you didn't enjoy it. You're not enjoying it now. <laughs> and you don't even feel close to Jesus. But have you got a word from God in your heart? Do you have a message from God in your heart? If you have, don't ever doubt in the dark <laughs> the word that God has spoken over you and over your life in the light. Here's the thing today. What has God spoken over your life? What has God spoken over your family? What's God spoken over your finances? What's God spoken over your world? Don't doubt in the dark that which God has spoken to you in the light. Maybe today you're watching me and you're not sure where you stand with God. Well, I can tell you that you are beloved, you are wanted, you are, you are desired. God wants you. God wants all to be saved. If that is what God said. All you need to do is get on the boat with Jesus and say, here I am, Lord. Would you do that today? Would you do that with me right now? Maybe right now your storm is medical. Maybe your storm is financial. Maybe your storm is spiritual. Maybe your storm is re relational. It could be a multitude of things. But right now, all I'm asking you to do is make a declaration to the storm. Would you do that with me right now? Just raise your hands wherever you are in faith. You know, this is, this is not just me doing something silly. This is a, a place of surrender, but it's also a place of faith. Father God, in Jesus' name, right now, we thank you that we can still the storm. Storm, be quiet right now in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we pray for the coming of the new frontier, the new land, the new boldness to walk and to see your kingdom come in Jesus' name. Every sickness healed, every lost person saved, every person today watching here who is troubled by a storm will feel the calm of your presence and your encounter in Jesus' name. Thank you, my friends, for coming and watching tonight, enjoying this. Please share it with your friends. For those watching on TBN, we love you guys so much. Please let us know your testimony and tell us what's happening in your world. God bless you.